Hello, my name is Nicola, and I was part of the team that worked on the balanced amplifier uh, for our professor, our supervisor, Professor George Latheriadis. Here's our PCV finalized design. Um, so it's a microchip technology built on a PCB with copper traces and soldered components. And these wires go to our DC supply for our transistor. The transistors are uh, these parts. Um, they are three millimeters in width and they are the core components for the amplification of our amplifier. So some of my responsibilities included coming up with a finalized design, which was balanced amplifier technology involving two branches, hybrid couplers, two transistors, and uh, combining the signals with two ports. Um, so I helped with coming up with a finalized uh, design. Um, once we came up with which topology we were going to use, I first helped engage with uh, which transistors we were going to select. So off of DigiKey, we ordered uh, Toshiba transistors, which would meet our objectives. Our objectives can be seen in the poster. This is the gain over the bandwidth, basically, and the size constraint. And so once we found which transistors would meet our objectives, uh, we then had to design the, the circuit layout, copper traces. And this was largely my responsibility uh, in advanced design system, especially the input and output matching networks. So these are the core components because uh, they balance the reflections we get along our line. Um, so they are seen here, 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 and here. So those are the input and output matching networks around the transistor. And they're designed to achieve optimum gain without having any unwanted reflections and achieving a stable amplifier. Um, so I designed that in ADS and then we fabricated it and came up with this. Uh, once we had our printed circuit board, I operated the vector network analyzer. I calibrated it and ran the, we, we all ran measurements, but I operated the VNA while we were testing to make sure it was always properly calibrated. Um, some challenges we ran into, uh, we ran into a, a big challenge once we had our finalized design. We had to plug it in at the ports and um, measure from input to output our gain. And these wires connect to our DC supply, which bias our transistor. And they were designed for 16 volts. Uh, we found the optimum was 15 volts. But before we could power up our supply uh, to 16 volts, we started turning up the power slowly, the voltage. And at one volt, uh, just prior to two volts, we experienced dangerous spikes in our vector network analyzer, VNA. These can be seen in our poster under the challenges section. So these spikes are dangerous because they can damage the VNA and they signify some instability in the amplifier, meaning reflections are uh, producing positive feedback and um, not being canceled out properly. So we wondered why this was happening and we concluded that, well, we're operating at a two volt supply when we designed for a 16 volt supply. So we thought that maybe these problems would disappear once we reached 16 volts. But to be safe, we connected uh, attenuators at the input and output ports, which would block some of our signal 
and protect the vector network analyzer in case uh, we had more instability. So with these safety precautions in place, we then ramped up the voltage until we for, from our supplies to reach our correct operating point. And once we hit 16 volts, 15 volts, uh, we found out that the spikes disappear and we get stability and our results are seen in the results section of the poster. So in the results, we have the, the teal line, which is the forward gain. And this is our gain of our amplifier, which should match our objectives. This was one of the things we were looking for. The other lines are the unwanted reflections and they measure how much uh, like unwanted reflections and noise is appearing in our amplifier. Um, so we don't meet our objectives entirely. We wanted 10.5 decibel gain at our center frequency and we reached 8.4 decibels at our sensor frequency of 900 megahertz. And the variation was because we used uh, bulky soldered components. So like these soldered components are not perfect. Uh, they're, they're very low quality and they incur high ohmic losses. Uh, these components are un removed because we only need one uh, biasing circuit so these are both biasing circuits for our transistor and we found that this one was re redundant so we disconnected it to save ohmic losses and only use the top branch um, so if we improve our design in the future, we can use machine solder smaller components like millimeter fabricated solder components, which will reduce ohmic losses, uh, the losses and increase our gain. Our bandwidth was fairly fairly decent. We we get we lose we cut off at 1.2 gigahertz, whereas in our simulations we cut off at 1.3 gigahertz, uh, but we achieve positive amplification, uh, fairly fairly linear slope uh, within this bandwidth. And one of the advantages of our design is that we, we use a balanced amplifier tip topology, which means that these hybrid couplers do a good job of canceling out unwanted reflections. And therefore our amplifier can operate in better noise environments as a low noise amplifier, low noise amplifier. Uh, some sources of interference can include anything that interferes with your wireless signal being received, such as floors, walls, other wireless signals, electric appliances, electromagnetic fields. Um, so an amplifier that can withstand these interferences is, is better. So our amplifier, we ran simulations on how our amplifier would behave if these transistors were operating not identical, they need to be identical, but we intentionally mismatched them in our simulations and tested our outputs with mismatches and we uh, observed good stable readings. Um, so our amplifier uh, works well in a noisy environment, which was the main reason why we selected this design. So right now the applications include like legacy modems that work at one gigahertz. Uh, if we want to operate at a higher frequency for five gigahertz, we would need to select different transistors and alter the matching networks, but it is possible. Um, so other applications can be at, at higher frequencies, the circuit will also be smaller because at higher frequencies, the wavelength is smaller, which is proportional to all our dimensions on the, the PCB. So at higher frequencies, we'll have a smaller circuit and can then fit it even into a, a cell phone or a router, a current one. And our, our topology would 
work well with operating as a operation as a low noise amplifier so it would uh, withstand interference very well so that is our amplifier once again here here is the board and I hope you enjoy this presentation thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation bye